Hi, I'm Jay Haynes for the Film Sensei YouTube channel. Today in this video, we are going to draw in the air in HitFilm Express. All right, so I am working in HitFilm Express version 5, and as long as you have the newest version of HitFilm Express, then you will be able to do this as well. It is a free piece of software, so no worries there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click on this, and I am going to make a composite shot out of my raw footage, clicking OK, and I'm just going to rename my composite shot Draw in the Air, okay? The first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to figure out where I start actually drawing. So about maybe right there. And I'm just going to create a new point layer. Okay. And this will be the J. So I'm just going to call that point J. And then I'm going to go until the end about right there or so. And I'm just going to slice off that point and then delete the rest of it. So that way I sort of have an idea of where my point is going to be. Now all I have to do is just, I'm going to use the slider here to just get, come in a little closer. I just need to start here and all I'm going to do is just track where my pen is. Okay, so I'm going to open up my raw footage and under tracks I'm going to hit the plus icon. This tracker I'm going to call J because it will be the J tracker. And I'm going to, using my mouse wheel, zoom in here a little bit and just put that on the tip of the pen. And then I'm just going to track this, okay? And I'm going to do this uh, one at a time because I want to make sure that I actually am, in fact, getting a good track on it because when it gets a little bit blurry, I've noticed that it kind of loses itself. And it's not as good as I had hoped it was going to be. Wah! See? And so I just sort of track this one point at a time. The good news is, is it's not that hard. But if I have a background like those dogs in that picture back there, then it can really throw the track off. So you just want to take your time and make sure you do this right and get a good track. Okay? And I'm going to skip through this, and then I'll be back. So now that I've done the entire track, what I'm going to do is under the tracking controls here for J, I am going to transform that to the point letter J. So I'll select that and then I'll click apply. Okay. So now if you go back to the viewer layer, you can see that that point is going to follow my um, pen all the way. And that's what I want. I want that where that point or that the point here knows exactly where it needs to be to draw that letter. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new plane layer and it can be black. And I'm just going to slide this plane until here. Wait a minute. In fact, let me pull this back. And I'm just going to trim this plane so that it begins here at uh, where that point is. Okay. I'm going to rename that plane J. And I am immediately going to add a demult of key effect to it so that the black is gone. Okay. And then I'm going to add the drawing effect, which will be the two point auto light sword. I'm going to put that above the demult key. Okay. And I am going above the demult key. And what I'm going to do is open it up. The hilt I'm going to apply to the J point. And the tip I'm going to apply to the J point. And I want to zero that out. So both parts of that are sitting right there on that J point. I can adjust the width. I would adjust both of them to be the same. In this case, I'm going to leave them as is. Okay. I'm going to open up the core. And then I can decide what color I want it to be. In this case, I want it to be purple. I'm going to go ahead and take the feather and drop it all the way down to zero. And I'm going to take the stability and bump it all the way up to 100. Okay. As far as the inner glow, if you want to have a, like a glow on that, you certainly can. I didn't, so I just dropped it down to zero. Okay. So now we have this dot that follows my pen, right? And it looks really cool. But the problem is, is that it's not staying there. It's not leaving. So here is 
where we get that to happen. The first thing you want to do is you want to open up the auto scale persistence and unclick that. And then the motion persistence is basically like a motion blur. It tells you how long we want that to be on the screen. And if I kind of start cranking that up, then it will be on there longer and longer. And how long do I want it to be on? A long time. So I'm just going to push this up into the 500s there or 600s. So that way it will stay there for the entire effect, you see. So now I have this situation where I draw the J just like that. And then I draw the A and I draw the Y. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for the A and for the Y. As you can see, I went ahead and changed the color of the A and the Y. But again, I want to point out that it's very important to realize that if you want to have like a glow around your, you know, whatever, you can do that. It's all up to you, right? However you feel like, whatever colors you want to use, width, sizes, etc. and so on, it's actually pretty easy to do using the Light Sword 2.0 effect. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. If you have any questions or feedback, Drop them in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. I'm going to open up the core, and then I can decide what color I want it to be. In this case, I want it to be purple. Oh, ouch. Excuse me.